Hello, what's happening, everybody? Welcome back to the show, Brushing Up with Sean. How you guys been, man? I miss you guys. I've been working on some paintings here. Tonight's episode is gonna be kind of a special one. Um, it's gonna be the first of its kind, and we're gonna make a few as we go along, but this is gonna be our first dedication show. Um, little story on what kind of happened, what kind of inspired me to do this was I was just driving on my way to work and I listened to quite a few podcasts. And one of them is uh, a person that I've listened to for quite a long time. Um, growing up in Southern California, this person was on the radio uh, constantly. It was like the number one morning show. Um, they've progressed into uh, their own show and their own podcast. Um, so this one is for Mark Thompson and Mark in the Morning, uh, Mark and Brian show. Some of those might ring a bell. And now they have a podcast, um, the Mark and Linda podcast. So this one is a special one for uh, for you, Mark, I was listening to your podcast just the other day, and I know you were telling everybody that you do watch Bob Ross, and one day you're going to paint one of those sunsets on your pier. Um, well, I'm here to help you. I want to get you going with it, and I'm going to kind of give you a breakdown of what you'll need um, to get that thing started, and I'm going to dedicate this one to you. There's going to be a fun end surprise at the end of this one here. So for sure, I think you're gonna dig it. Um, again, thank you so much for all the years of laughs and tears and funny, cool things that you've done um, and the dedication that you really bring um, out in what you do. Um, it's really an art, a craft, and uh, this is the least I can do, is dedicate this painting here for you and help you progress into maybe some of these paintings here. So. I hope you enjoy it, man, and uh, again, thank you for everything, and let's have some fun, man. All right? Let's have some fun. Everybody, let's go. Let's do this. All right, so let's first cover some of the material that you're going to need to start this painting up here. I've got my canvas. This size is 16 by 20. You can pick up whatever you like. They do sell 11 by 14. They even sell smaller sizes, eight by 10. They sell much larger sizes too. So whatever maybe is comfortable for you to start with and how much paint and dedication you wanna do for this. Um, you're gonna to wanna to get some paint. I use acrylic paint and I really just get the basic acrylic paint. You don't need to invest too much money into this and you also wanna get a few brushes. I really get a lot of my stuff um, through Michaels. It's a store out here. Um, there's a lot of uh, good paint that can go a long way. They have a whole line call, called Artist, Artist Loft and I tend to use that on all the painting events that I use. Um, it's, it's a good way to get started and a good paint to try out. Eventually, once you start getting that expertise and you get it all down, man, you can go and get so many different types of paint. You can even delve into oils, uh, watercolor, whatever you like. But I think acrylic is gonna be the one that's gonna work for you. Um, it definitely is a user-friendly kind of paint. Um, you wanna kinda get some small, medium, uh, and large size brushes, all right? You don't need too many of them because you can just clean them off and we can add different colors of paint. So uh, you wanna get a water cup, maybe a plate, and just have at it. Let's do this. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna teach you how to work on your background, your sky, your clouds, because that eventually is where um, your, your fan, uh, or your, you know, the person you follow, Bob Ross, he starts with that background stuff first. You can always see on his paintings, really, most of the time, he does start from the furthest thing back, and then he works his way forward. So he typically starts with the sky. So that's what I'm gonna teach you tonight, is really just sky, clouds, getting a feel for that paint. You mentioned that you're watching some sunsets um, on your pier, and I think this is gonna be huge for you. I think this is a great step for you. And eventually you can start doing some silhouettes, um, maybe check out some of the other episodes I do. I do teach that for you as well. But let's go ahead and start with this here. Get some basic color. The colors that I've got are your primary colors, which is gonna be red, blue, and yellow. And then I do have plain white right, by, right down here. So we're gonna mix all these. Um, it's gonna come out to a lot of different colors, but again, make mistakes, have fun. This is just a learning process. It's gonna be something fun for you, man. And eventually you'll make those happy little trees and whatnot. Um, you'll delve into it. Here we go. So we got our canvas right up here. Now you can do an easel like I do. 
I do a lot of paintings on a flat surface as well. I, you know, it's just as easy. You don't have to go, like I said, invest in all this crazy stuff just to get started. But as you're digging it, as you're liking it, maybe a little bit more, then you can start getting a little bit more stuff into it because I'm sure you have some sweet uh, sunsets over at Lake Norman. Here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and grab one of my larger size brushes just because I wanna cover a lot of canvas real quick. All right, it's a basic step and we're just gonna use a couple colors. We're gonna start off with our plain blue on that large size brush. You're gonna go right up here to the top and go side to side, back and forth. All right, side to side, back and forth. Now it's okay if you're starting to see a little bit of texture come off of this brush and on the paint here on the canvas. It's okay, we're gonna use that to our advantage don't add more paint to even it out because that's going to take longer for it to dry and we want this to kind of dry a little bit faster on us. Now if you want to start eventually getting to blending we'll start we'll delve into that later on but for now I want you to get a feel for this paint. Easy steps back and forth side to side. Now you're more than welcome to paint your edges I leave that entirely up to you if you want to paint your edges that that's a whole different thing um, you know you want to keep kind of going with the painting if you do your edges a lot of times I just plain, uh, paint mine plain black and it kind of just kind of makes a nice frame around the paint so a lot of contrast I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit more and again side to side back and forth now that paint is already starting to dry off man it's already starting to get a little bit drier now, if we were doing oils, this would take forever to dry. We'd be at this painting for a long, long time. So that's why I got you using acrylic paint. All right, boom, there we go. So as you can see, a nice blue, but I wanna start lightening it up. I wanna start changing things. So I'm gonna take that same brush that has that blue on there, and I wanna just go ahead and scoop up some white. Okay, now you got blue and white on your brush. I'm gonna come right underneath here and go back and forth side to side. And what that does now is that's making a light powdery blue. Now this is up to you, man. If you wanna bring this up a little bit higher into your regular blue, you can see it blends as you do that back and forth side to side technique, all right? And you can see it just changes things really dramatically. Now, if you want, you're like, hey, this is a little too bright. Add more blue on your brush, change it up. Just put a little bit more on there and you can see that darkens it up quite a bit. Now, don't worry, this is just your background here. We're gonna add a lot of different textures coming up here soon, but this is a great step to get you used to the paint. Just a good feel. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit more white as I come down and you can see it lightens up as I come a little bit further down. And I'm gonna come about just about halfway down my canvas, not all the way, because we're gonna start delving into another color. All right, now you can see it's blending because I'm doing that back and forth, side to side deal. That helps that. All right, there you go. Nice base layer, a good start to our painting here. I'm gonna go ahead and dunk that in my water cup and grab a new kind of medium to large size brush. This one is a inch and a half brush. So you can see it's got all the numbers and everything on there. And now we're gonna make a new color. We're gonna add a little bit more of a pink. So we're gonna take a little bit of red and mix it into some of our white. Okay, red into white. And we're gonna start on the bottom. And we're gonna go back and forth, side to side. While we're working on this down here, your blue is starting to dry even more. All right. You can even add a little bit of plain red if you like on there. And again, we're gonna kind of make some cool pastels happen and we'll add some more color coming in. But back and forth, side to side with your pink. And as you start to progress up, start adding more white onto your brush. Okay, we're gonna progress up a little bit more, side to side, now you can see it's lightening up. 
and it's okay if it's looking a little streaky. In fact, we're gonna use that to our advantage, so don't add more paint to try to even it out. Make it streaky. Get those textures out of there. You'll see what I mean when we start getting in it. All right, I'm gonna add some plain white now, mostly a lot of plain white on my brush as I come up further, and now it's becoming a real light pink. Very, very bright light pink. Look at that. Okay, I'm not coming into the blue just yet, letting it dry just a little bit as we're finishing up this white down here, covering all the canvas as best we can. Now we're gonna bring some of that white and here is gonna come right in between the blue and the red and the pink. This is where it blends that nice subtle color. Adding more white. Look at this, look at these like little streaks coming off now. And now that is your color that helps get these two together. It starts blending. Again, look at what I'm doing. I'm going back and forth, side to side. Now just know going into this that even yours is gonna look different. If I were to paint this again, it would look different than this, all right? Every painting is different. Every sky, and as you know, every sunset that you're seeing is completely different. So that's what the beauty of this is all about. So you can see you've got nice little streaks, nice gradual blending, and it's just a really pretty step. Okay. These are our base layers. When you're done with that, when you're going back and forth, go ahead and rinse your brushes off, dry them off, whatever you need to do, dunk them in your water cup. And we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna come up a little bit closer. We're gonna start breaking this sky up with some clouds. So you can see we've got, we're gonna add some new color into it as well. Let's just see what pops up. Let's experiment a little bit with color and uh, go for it. We're gonna add a lot of texture on here. So get ready, man. It's gonna be stellar. We're gonna enjoy it and uh, keep up the good work, all right? All right, so you should be wrapping up, blending, going back and forth with that technique. Now the thing that's gonna break this up and what's also gonna connect it are clouds. We're gonna start making a lot of different colors here, a lot of changes happening to the smooth pattern that we did, that side to side, back and forth. Now it's gonna change everything. So we're gonna start off with our warmer colors here and just keep it going with some more clouds coming in. So you can see I've got my red and my yellow. I'm gonna make a little bit of an orange by taking a, maybe a more of a smaller to medium sized brush, mixing in some of that red into your yellow and just a nice light, you know, orange is gonna start appearing, a basic orange. And what you're gonna do now is a little bit different technique. You're gonna start adding these little tiger stripes, these little streaks down here. And we're gonna break up some of that really pink and red color here. And it's gonna add a new feel to this painting, a whole new feel to this painting. You can see the color is real vibrant, just starting to come off your brush there. By the way, congratulations on all your stuff you got going on right now. I know you've got a lot of stuff going on, um, you know, working on your movie stuff too. So that's pretty rad. I love hearing all that kind of cool stuff happening. And uh, it was so cool to see that you got to go back into, um, you know, the KLOS deal and hang out with Brian a little bit and do all your stuff. So man, that's kudos, man. That's a long time you guys were together. And I tell you, man, I grew up on all that stuff. Um, you know, you know, with my parents driving me to school, listening to you back in the day, um, you know, to just, you know, that day you retired, that just was like a killer show. Um, but it's so cool to see you guys are doing. I love that you do stuff with your wife, with Linda. She's awesome, Skeeter. Um, that's so cool that you guys like have that connection and just keep that rocking. So uh, keep up the amazing work, guys. Yeah, got some great kids too. Um, I just, I just filmed my first uh, kids show with my daughter and she's an art little artist too. So she wanted to be in a video. So I'll be posting that soon. 
Um, all my stuff is going to be on YouTube. It's brushing up with Sean, S H A U N. Um, and I'll send you guys an email too and just let you know how much I appreciate you guys. And again, I, this was totally dedicated for all the years of just entertainment that I got from you. So again, I appreciate it. Um, so you see, you got these orange coming in here, really pretty color. We're not gonna really delve into too many like yellows or anything like that. I wanted to keep that subtle down here and you know really have that kind of burnt cloud looking effect. So rinse that brush, kind of dry it off when you're done, kind of making those like little tiger stripes. What it does is it's giving you the illusion that there's some distant clouds, okay? There's some distant clouds. The sun was setting down somewhere around there and it's it's hitting that light source. It's just, just bouncing off those clouds and it's just about to go under and you can see we have a little bit more of a darker sky approach coming up next. In fact, uh, once you grab a new brush, again, maybe a small to medium size brush, um, I'm going to use more of a medium size because I'm kind of used to the technique here, but what I'm going to do is start making some darker clouds. And all I'm going to do really is just practice with some blue, some plain blue. And this is a different technique now. Um, I'm going to start kind of dabbing or blotting and breaking up some of this pretty cool sky back here. You can see it stands out a little bit. The reason why it's standing out a little bit more and we're using the same color, the plain blue, is because we gave it a chance to dry. So again, I'm just breaking it up. It's still a little bit wet here because I'm going a little bit faster than you probably are at home. But you know, that's what it's all about. You can just rewind it. But what I wanted to do is at least break this down for you so you can see the technique and see how you know you can just practice on the sky forever. And then um, I'm gonna be making shows on mountains. We'll, we'll practice our mountains. We're gonna practice our trees. We're gonna do reflection. We're gonna do water. We're gonna do all these awesome things. And then, you know what? I'm gonna do some little clouds just kind of tapering off here. Okay, so you can see just a fun little cloudy sky. And they got a little bit bigger as they collected over this way here. The wind's kind of taking them. I'm just using the leftover paint on my brush, you know, just breaking it up here. And we can make all sorts of different kind of colors with this. I'm going to add maybe a little bit of white into my blue just to see what that effect does as we come further down. Maybe lightens it up. Look at that. Maybe make some of those tiger stripes, a little break up of clouds down here. I'm barely, barely touching the canvas, just barely touching it. Look at that. One of my favorite skits from Mark and Brian, besides the obvious ones, there were so many of the obvious ones, you can list all of them, was when you guys did like an Olympic kind of like, I think it was like in Beijing, and you guys did this like ridiculous skit, <laughs> like go, go to, and you had like the funniest names. It was great. If you, I, I think, it, I think you could still find it like somewhere online. <laughs> it was just amazing. That one stood out to me. Of course, the regular ones for sure. Kruger. Boom. But check that out. And you know who I really loved was uh, Eric's voices, man. When he did Jenner, I was like, <laughs> I was like, no way. This is hilarious. <laughs> So good stuff, man. I just I still remember it vividly. But you can see I'm just breaking up the sky. So I'm gonna go back to painting, sorry. Um, breaking it up, adding some texture, adding some streaks in here. You know, you can even make some bigger clouds here. You can make some puffier ones if you want. Just add, all you're doing is you're just blotting and dabbing. Making that sky look like there's some fun stuff happening there. Every sky is different. Nature is not perfect, and we're going to use that to our advantage on this painting here. Beautiful. You can see it's drying off. Now, if you want to make some darker clouds, you add a little bit of red into your blue, and that's going to make some purple. Check this out. Just kind of breaking up that even more. 
a little bit of red into your blue. Look at that purple that comes off there now. It almost looks like there's some shadowing going on with these clouds. A real interesting thing that we can do with all of these colors, the primary colors. All right, I'm gonna add like some real deep dark purple right there and break that up. Okay, I'm gonna save some room. Look at that, fun, 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 fun. So keep working on it. Now if you want, you can even add some white into your purple and that makes a pastel kind of purple here. Check this out, I'm gonna add some clouds down here, maybe some fluffier ones, just a different kind of dabbing. But I still wanna see some of that original pink. Still wanna see some of that original pink that we got below there. We're getting rid of those blending deals that we did before. Check that out, look at just, scooping up some white on my same brush that had the purple, the blue, and everything on it. These colors are starting to connect. They're starting to get next to each other. We're using all the same kind of colors, but we're just blending them differently with white. And it's just gonna take practice. That's all it does, takes practice. But what you gotta do is you gotta get that paint and just start. Maybe you guys can do like a fun family night. I'm gonna be doing some uh, interactive sh paint party shows. That's coming up here soon too. Um, so you can actually host your own paint party at your house. So that's gonna be a lot of fun. But work on that. Okay, you can see I've just been using the same brush. I'm just getting some of the leftover paint off of my brush. But look at all those clouds. Look at, look at what we did. We added those colors. We added some highlights, we added some low lights. In fact, here I can add a few more highlights of that plain white. You just start feeling the, feeling the color. You start feeling the brush too. And this is just this kind of acrylic paint. I've worked with acrylic paint that has like, it's as thick as toothpaste, you know? So just whatever you pick up, but just get the cheaper kind. All right, I'm gonna let you work on that for a little bit. I got a fun little treat of a surprise coming up here soon. So there's a nice sunset for you, Mark. Enjoy. Love it. Do it. Crank it out, dude. All right, man. Keep it, keep it going. All right, Radio God. So your last bit of awesome treat for this painting here is kind of a fun step that I love to do. And sometimes you can put these like cool subliminal things going on, especially in clouds, if you can kind of get a feel for it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start making this kind of awesome, just very lightly subliminal message here. And I know you're a big Fan. So we're gonna go ahead and just try to see if I can knock this thing out here. This is all just by kind of memory here, looking at uh, you know many many years of following my team. But I've done some pretty funny stuff with these uh, paintings here. I've done like some cool hidden things in some of the paintings, and this one I'm gonna do with this this one here because I know you're a fan. And we are going to be making this cool logo. And I'm going to give it a shot. <laughs> it might not be perfect, but we're going to give it a whirl here. And you can see I'm just trying, <laughs> attempting to make your favorite football team's logo kind of hidden in the clouds here. I'm just gonna kind of hide it as best I can. 
but make it look like a little bit like that logo. Boom. That's what's so fun about these paintings. You can just <laughs> mess around. Boom. And I'm gonna make a little different with these clowns here. But I'm gonna go ahead and kind of subtly and I'll just dissipate this cloud here and kind of do some outer connection with it. Maybe even add a little bit of highlight just to showcase that it is in fact your beloved Carolina Panthers. I think we're getting close to it. Gosh, it's tough to do by memory. But I think I'm doing pretty good. Either way, you know what it's there. And it's there for that awesome kind of subliminal. You know what I can do is just make some of these little clouds right here, kind of tapering around it just so it looks like it happened naturally for you. Boom. And at the end of the show, what I'm going to do is I'll give you another raffle ticket question here. If you watch some of the other shows, you can definitely delve into some of these raffle ticket guesses here. But I don't know if you're going to like me on this raffle ticket question, but we'll, <laughs> we'll see afterwards. But there you go, man. Your Carolina Panthers hidden in the clouds. Just subtle enough to, so you can kind of be like, wait a minute, is that the Panthers? Yes, it is. Boom. I'm going to add some of these shadows right here, right underneath that panther, and just make it look like it's happening naturally again in the sky. <laughs> Boom. Fun step. Hopefully, you can kind of see that. I'm going to come up a little bit closer on there. And you can see what I'm working on there. <laughs> just something fun for you, bud. Just something fun. I put that there. Again, you can kind of work on this. I did it really fast for you so you can at least get a gist of it and um, just have fun messing around with your colors and playing around. So give that a shot, work on that. And we're gonna wrap this thing up. All right, so that is a wrap on this painting here of just clouds. Again, your sunset. Um, your really pretty colors. Again, we use just very few colors, but we mixed enough to really kind of bring out a lot of different colors, pastels, warmer colors, pinks, oranges, all sorts of fun stuff. Um, I hope this is cool for you, man, and I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, again, we can keep rocking this out, whatever you want. Um, but again, this was my first dedication show. Um, you definitely inspired the heck out of me when you were mentioning that you do watch uh, Bob Ross every night and I'm like, dude, I got to help you out with this. I got to teach you just the basics because I tell you, Bob makes some pretty sweet things happen and he uses a lot of crazy technique, but don't worry, man, you're going to get there. I know you can. So on that note, I'm going to go ahead and give our raffle ticket question. This will be on our Instagram brushing up with Sean and Facebook brushing up with Sean. The question to you guys for the first five people to guess this answer first and you submit your answers on our Facebook, go ahead and tell me who was the last team to beat the Carolina Panthers in the Super Bowl? Oh my goodness, and it's my favorite team. Sorry, Mark. But yes, who was the last team to beat the Carolina Panthers in the Super Bowl? That's your raffle ticket question. Hope you enjoy the show, man, and uh, keep doing what you're doing. I'll keep doing what I'm doing. Uh, thanks again for watching. Take care, man. Love you.